Hello everybody and welcome back to another video um, or common mistakes and this time we're going to be discussing um, engines or how to deal with engines. Um, that's a very interesting concept because engine cards, let's just first clarify what engine cards are. Basically engine cards in Gwent are typically um, a term given to cards that generate value over time. Um, some of these cards need certain you know, cards and synergies to enable this value over time. Some of them work by themselves. And these cards can be very, very dangerous, especially in long rounds, due to the fact that they are constantly generating value um, if they're left unanswered. And usually what you see happen with engine cards is they are the kind of cards that if they are left unanswered, they can re receive an immense amount of points in a long round. Um, and they are typically going to be much more points than an average card if they are not answered. And for that reason, they're very, very greedy. And when I say greedy, it means they are very vulnerable to control. If you are able to, you know, kill them or it, also not just through direct control, but also with, you know, bleeding them, pushing them, passing on them. They have a lot of weaknesses, but it seems that a lot of new players especially don't quite understand their weaknesses and their weak if, if their weaknesses aren't exploited then you can find yourself in a lot of trouble if you are um, against an engine deck and either ill-equipped um, based on your deck or even then ill-equipped based on your understanding of how to approach it so i'm um, for that reason i'm going to jump into um, two games i'm going to play one game where my deck is quite favored against engine decks and show you how you meant to play it if your deck is well equipped to deal with it and then i'll play another game where i'm going to play an unfavored matchup and i'm going to have to try you know think outside the box and maybe play a bit differently in order to beat the engine deck so i'm going to show you how to do that i'm going to be doing it with mr hippopotamus or hippotompotamus who has agreed to help me with this recording and um yeah let's jump into some games and show you how to do it okay so for the first game we're going to be playing we're, we're going to be playing a very control heavy deck versus an engine heavy deck and the purpose for this is i basically want to show that you don't always need to take so often people think when it comes to engines you need to you know push them in round two you have to get a short round three because otherwise you're gonna lose a long round three and that depends upon your deck if you run a deck with control options and you think you can trade up enough in a long round three you can very much consider just taking a pass in round two winning round one passing round two potentially or even passing round one even and just taking the long um, round three and just try and basically trade up with their engines with all your control and that is pretty much what i think our plan this game is going to be basically is to try win round one take the long round three and um basically just trap with our control tools now like i said not every deck can do this some decks are not equipped to beat an engine deck in a long round, which is why we're going to do two games. The first game we're going to play a deck where we are having a deck that can deal with an engine deck in a long round three. And the next game we're going to play is where we can't deal with an engine based deck in a long round three. So push them in round two quite hard. Um, so for now, what do we want to do here? He plays an engine. Um, there's a couple of things we can do. We want to try to take this as efficiently as possible. We want to keep our you know better control cards for when they matter. Um, for now, I think it's okay to maybe just play... Um, the right uh play another engine let's just try winning one of our bronze King, engines okay if he does try to um kill these with or damage these we can always reactivate the armor with the radovids guard but yeah the purpose of this video is basically to show you how if you're playing a deck that's equipped to deal with an engine based deck you, wish, you don't necessarily need to um push them or be in control of the game you can potentially do it without you know, Without being in control of the game, so we're gonna do this. Play the guard. If the king demands ahead, I'll give him yours. Kill that and start chipping away at this. And yeah, we'll basically just try win round one. <clears throat> okay, this. does that pretty good? That means it can't get armor to this, which is definitely a good thing. Well, for him, not for me. <laughs> so play this and. Long live, et cetera, et cetera. I guess we just keep hammering away at this. I mean, imagine he's probably going to pass soon. He's not really got a lot of points on the board. And we are pretty much in control around. So I would imagine, yeah, a pass would come down at this point. So, if you're a, a deck that doesn't have a lot of control, you would definitely need to push round two against a deck such as this that's playing a lot of engines. But due to the fact that we are playing... Um, a deck with so much control, like we are running an absolute enormous amount of control cards. We can quite comfortably take a long round three and we should be able to do just fine in a long round. So we're going to mulligan away here and look for our gold cards. 
And then I think we're going to just take a long run against this because there's no reason to push with VS. So much good control options. So another th important thing is to how do you identify an engine-based deck? First of all, if you see a lot of bronze cards like this that get charges, or if we see the word charge, and you see, uh, I mean, not, not always charge, but if you look at cards like this, this card, on allied, give one charge on allied units, cooldown one. Every turn it's getting, um... It's basically giving a charge. Every turn, every time you play a mage, this card's getting a charge. These are engine cards. They get value over time. When you see cards like this, you get an idea that the opponent's playing an engine-based deck. We're gonna play We're gonna play like one or two cards just to get to the seven card mark and then we'll just take a pass. Um, basically just so that he can't dump any card here and take it. He has to at least play something. Maybe we can get some value out of him. But we're basically just gonna play two cards and pass. And it is important to note that we are basically not gonna cross the seven card mark. We're gonna take the long round three and just try trade up to everything in round three with all of the control that's available to us so that's what we're gonna do now we're gonna just play a bunch of our bad bronze and then at this point we take the long round three and just try trade up to absolutely everything he plays with all the control available but yeah generally speaking you would push a deck like this but as we mentioned we believe we are quite favored with all the control in the long run so basically the answer is if you think you can beat a deck in a long round three you take it to a long round three. If you don't believe you can beat the deck in a long round three, you pass. Luckily, we're playing a control deck, which means we are um, we are able to beat this in a long round three. At least we should, as long as we draw somewhat decently. Let's hope we find more of our control cards. Look at things like Muzzle. Muzzle's a good card. That's nice. Uh, Valibur's good. Yes. Um, we lack Philippa, um, so we want to try probably find Philippa here. Uh, don't need two of these. Philippa's great. And... Uh, Stannis, this card, good card, so Mulligan, one more card here, and I guess, okay, so we don't find, um, we missed both of these, it's just fine, we still got a lot of our good control sets, okay, so, okay, so he opens up a portal, and he plays leader, and he plays then, Roche, okay, and this is typical, this, this deck does. So the Arbalest, every ally turn, well, oh, sorry, every time you play a unit with orders, this card's gonna gain one charge. And you can, they can use this charge to damage a unit by one. So these are engine cards as well. And basically what our opponent is doing is overwhelming the board with engines. And he's right now got three engines on the board, plus this, which is gonna be quite a few points. Now what do we do here? Um, there's a couple of things we can do. One, we can play just Philippa, try to deal with some of these, or we can play um, Falibur. There's a couple of, there's a lot of ways we can actually do with this. Um, question is what is going to be the best way what is going to be the best way and we got to figure that out and um hmm. i think what we do is we play leader into philippa set the um i mean this not going to be very good without any boost so i guess we don't put this card in hand let's extend this in hand play the philippa here The okay, sure. We missed some of it. I mean, we, play the, we can play the Lambert here and kill this off. Bit of respect. You're not talking so we deal with a lot of his engines right now. He can still play Sword onto this, which is a little bit annoying. I could have transformed that, but I think Archon's engines right now is very really more important. So he can, of course, sort this, which he does do. And it'll get more engines out for him. Let's see which engine he does manage to pull with this. That's what matters. Okay, so he pulls an Adept and the Spellweaver. Okay, so this card is going to get one point per turn always. This card is only getting one point per turn with the help of this card. So I think for that purpose, um, I think what we'll go ahead and do then is we'll probably just play One-Eyed Betsy to kill this off. Or do I? Yeah, of course, just play and yeah, of course, just play the princess. Let's kill some arm potentially. Kill that. That's giving charges. This is not. This card doesn't get one point per turn unless you're playing a mage. That card is always getting one point per turn, so it's a bigger threat. This card by itself will get one point per turn essentially, and this card you need to be playing a mage for it to be getting one charge. So it's a more valuable engine. Um, okay, so there's the archer. Um, like stuff. This is Supreme Wily target for us. So we'll go ahead and play Wily here then. Well, we've not had enough. Kill that off. 
And every time it plays an engine, the point is we're going to be trading up because we just got so much control. And generally speaking, control should trade up um, at least somewhat to engines, depending on the type of deck you're playing against. Um, so down comes Sheila. Mm. Interesting. And that could be a pretty decent one-eyed Betsy target. Uh, I guess one-eyed Betsy also does relatively well against Shani, although Shani plays for... Six plus two, it won't kill Shani. Yeah, I guess we just cut out the heat wave, Shani. Do that. And they want to probably set up a Falibur. We'll use the Ballista to set up a Falibur potentially. So, like I said, this deck is very good against Agent. A deck like this, however, will do have a lot of other weaknesses and it's not exactly advisable to play a deck like this there's shawnee so shawnee is pretty much a card we can't exactly kill with a lot of our cards so we use the heat wave to deal with it because heat wave basically kills any card and um shawnee is a card we can't exactly deal with um so we'll do that kill the shawnee and like i said a deck like this has a lot of weaknesses it does pretty bad against mid-range decks that's pretty bad against decks that just have a lot of points without engines and that for that reason we do you don't really be, want to be running a deck like this all the time. It, it's okay against engines, but that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is to basically explain to you how, if you have a deck that can deal with engines, um, there's no reason to push in round two. You kind of take a long round three and deal with it in a long round three, which is what we're doing right now. We're just taking it to a long round and trying to trade up to everything. And that's pretty much the plan here. Um, so it comes to fill up a... Uh, that's really good fill up things. All right, and then we play the Falibur. Yeah, kill this. I might do two damage this, so I got full value muzzle in, in case he doesn't play any more engines. We'll do that, set up a muzzle in case we need it. Although we're probably going to use muzzle on an engine potentially, but we'll see. Got, but I can't muzzle because of this. I'm not afraid. Fear is a commoner's trait. So we keep the muzzle for Vizgod, I guess. Because I muzzle this now. It puts in the back row. And then it starts getting pinged by Trebuchet, so he'll wait a bit. It's probably getting set up with Vizgod. There's the Vizgod, as expected. We shall avenge Vizgod back row. Never been, never near. And then we play the muzzle, I guess. Last card is what, Baron? I guess. Oh, Vincent. Might not like it. You sure as shit need me. Okay, so relatively close game. Um, and like I said, this is an engine based matchup where typically you're going to lose a long run. Um, but because our cards were so much control, um, we were able to trade up quite efficiently. Even though we were able to trade up quite efficiently, though, this game was actually quite close. So it is always dangerous to go into long round three against engines. But if your deck has enough control and you believe you are going to be able to trade up enough or efficiently enough, you can just take the long round three and you can sometimes just be fine. But now we're going to jump into a game after this where we're going to have a deck that's unfavored and we're going to take a long round three against it. And, or not a long round three, sorry. We're going to push in round two and not give a long round three due to the fact that our deck won't be able to do very well against engines in a long run. And we'll see how that goes with a deck that's more unfavored than this time. Um, but yeah, let's get to the next game and see how it goes. Okay, so for this next game, we have another Northern Realms deck, a bit of a different one, a proactive engine deck that, um, unlike the last one, this one, this, this deck of our opponent is still an engine, the cards are still going to get value over time, but they're going to get, they're going to get value basically by themselves. Um, we're going to be playing a very proactive deck of our, of our own this time, so we're going to be a lot more unfavored in this matchup. We have not much control options, so we've got to pick wisely when to use them. And this matchup is all about winning round one, because if we can't win round one, we'll lose the game. A long round three against an engine deck like this, where we have very little proact or very little reactivity, is very, very bad for us. So we need to win round one. And this hand is not looking too bad. I'm honestly concerned just keeping it here. And I think we might just take it. Uh, maybe just mulligan this. Anything in this. Okay. So, as I mentioned, this deck we're playing right now is a lot different than the last one we played. This one is very, very proactive. Which means we don't we don't actually have many good answers for a lot of our opponent's stuff. Which means we need to be in a position where we can win round one 
and bleed round two because without that we probably lose the game and that's very important so if you believe your deck has enough control to trade up enough to in a long round three against an engine deck it is okay to you know either pass round one or just pass or win round one and pass round two and take the long round three but in a deck such as this where there's very little um in terms of in terms of um reactivity you might need to just decide on taking a long or a winning around one approach and then pushing around two and then trying to get a short round three because in the long round three you most likely lose i think we're going to develop this and we might just consider um playing something like manticore and trying to kill some of these cards so we'll do this and then um Okay, so I guess we're gonna play Manticore here and try kill two of these engines. So we'll play the Manticore now. Trigger the um, Death Wish. Kill off two of these cards. And then try to, you know, win round one and push round two. If we can win round one on even, that'll be great. I'm not sure if we can win round one on even, but we'll see. Passive Knight, sure thing. We'll just play this, I guess. Eat the egg and keep this um, consumption going. So basically, yeah, the point of this round is we need to be winning this round because um, we need to be pushing round two. Okay. So it's getting two, four points turned passively. Basically, that's what's happening here. Um, play the dead love, I guess. Might just be able to win on even, which is pretty good. If we can win on even, we're very happy. Another engine. Air skull, another point. So it's getting basic. So you, it's very important that when you're playing against these decks, you also need to calculate how much points per turn your opponent's getting. So every ally turn on turn end boosts salt by one. Every ally turn on turn end boosts salt by one. Every ally turn on turn end boosts salt by two. Every ally turn boosts units to right by one. So it's getting one plus two, so it's three, plus another one, two. So he's getting five points per turn for free. So we need to keep that in mind. Every card we play is basically getting plus five points every single turn. And that's very, very important to know because often people don't really understand how much value your opponents are getting. And they just keep on playing into rounds they shouldn't be playing into. This In this situation, we kind of need to win on one. Because if we don't win on one, we're going to go into long round three against Sometimes this deck, deck which could be an absolute disaster for us. So I can't exactly give up the round, which is very, very awkward for me. And for that reason, I've got to keep going here. Um, so what do we want to play next? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can eat and then I place this front row and then decide from there onwards. Yeah, then I can eat this. This could do this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and put a lot of pressure on my opponent and try my best to win round one because winning round one is um, pretty much what I need to do here. If I don't win round one, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Got Rayla. Sure. I guess I'm gonna play this front row. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill my own one, which is fine, because then after this, I'm able to kill his cards. So I kills my own one here. He can't pass on me just yet. And the next time we start killing his units. Have a look at that. Like falling stars. Alright. Oh, 
Skeletor is going to start killing his units now, which is nice. Okay, so we win on even, which is great. Um, so we just managed to win round one on even, which is pretty good for us. It's very expensive, but like I said, in a matchup like this, where engines are so um, scary for us, because we have very little interaction with our opponents on the board, it is quite important to actually win round one. So it was very expensive for us to do so, but I think winning round one was definitely worth it in this situation. So now we're going to round two. We definitely want to push round two even further. So I guess we want to... What do we want to mulligan here? We can consume both of these with this, but I can't consume this instantly. I guess we mulligan this. I guess this should be fine. And I want to push round two. So what we do here then is we play... Um, I guess we start with Cave Troll. We'll just start with this. Yeah. Start with Cave Troll. Start with the Cave Troll, and then we can be able to potentially steal engines with this. And we want to tempo him out. Push round two, and then have a short, short round three, as short as possible. Is there about killing? Burns. Third degree, but still. Okay, so I'll play this. Can I grab it for Osral, potentially? Hmm. So... I can play this, not really achieving too much with it, or I can play Maruna. Um, Maruna is also not achieving too much because I can't. It has to be a four point or less. So I guess we have to pass here, which is okay, because like I said, we did force more card. We forced out two more engines. Every time we our opponent plays one engine, it's one less engine we have to deal with in round three. So whilst we do have to pass here, um, we have forced a lot of pretty good engines of our opponents. And I guess we have to pass here because we're not going to be able to trade up very well anymore. If you play any of these cards, just giving free card advantage. Um, so we'll pass here. And we're in a very short round three, which is our goal. We got a short round, which is great. And uh, that's pretty good for us because now we get double he get final save because he hasn't been able to... We, we won on even, which is great. And now we take the um, relatively short round three with double final save, which is great for us. So what do we want to kick? What do we want to keep? We kind of need this to trigger... Uh... Yeah, yeah, we kind of keep that. Sure. Now we've got a very short round three. We've got double final save, which is great. Discipline shall bring us victory. Start this. And hopefully plays an engine at some point that I can steal with Maruna. It's possibly might not play at all because he's got um, Reynard plus leader charges, so he can probably play around my um, Maruna. Destiny is unswerving. Cheated. It will not be. So he plays around the Maru uh, yeah, he plays around the Maruna, which is slightly annoying for me, but nothing I can do about that. Um, I guess I'll just play it from hand now then, and I guess he's leader charge on this then. Okay. Check the share. Things are gonna get kind of interesting soon. Alright, so we're going to play the second last so he can't interact with it. His last card might be a Vincent. Play this, and then hopefully these pings don't hit the Jürgen. Then we can play the Osral last. I guess it's just a, um, an AK. Okay. So, let's hope the pings don't hit you. <laughs> Please don't ping my Jürgen. Alright, so that's basically an example of a matchup where we don't exactly have many ways to deal with his engines. So we have to be in control again. We have to win round one, push round two, and try to be in a position where we can bleed out as many of his engines as possible because we can't deal with them. We, if we're not going to be able to deal with them in round three, we're not going to be able to control them in round three, we need to deal with them with the, with the use of um, passing. And passing is one of the most efficient tools of removal in the game. People don't often think of it like that, but passing is a form of removal. By passing, you basically wipe the board. And that can be one of the most important tools available against engine-based decks. So if you de if you basically, the summary, um, if your deck is able to deal with engine in long round three with control, then by all means, take the long round three. If you believe your deck does not have enough cards that can damage and kill your opponent's cards, then it is important that you actually win round one and push round two and then 
you know, short in round three to the point where their engines aren't as valuable as they would be otherwise. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to be making sure you don't give up round one very easily if you believe your opponent is an engine-based deck. And when I say engines, like I said, I mean cards that get value over time. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section below or come by my Twitch stream. I stream every day um, at 12 p.m. CST um, till 5 p.m. CST or 5.30 p.m. CST. And you can feel more than, more than free to ask me any questions if you have any questions further about this type of concept. And until next time, Bye guys, have a great day slash evening.